हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडेस टॉपिक दैट आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू इज अबाउट डडीरास डीकंस्ट्रक्शन जैक्स डडीरा हु वाज बोर्न इन 1930 ही वाज बेसिकली इंस्पायर्ड बाय फ्रेडरिक नेजिशी सिगमंड फ्रॉड मार्टिन हेडिगर एज वेल एज फर्डिनेंड शिशा जैक्स डडीरा बिलोंग्स टू पोस्ट स्ट्रक्चरस ओके सो लेट मी टेल यू हु आर द पीपल हु हैव कम बिफोर जैक्स डडीरा एंड हु आर द पीपल हु हैव कम आफ्टर जैक्स डडीरा परहैप्स दैट यू आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट द पीपल हु कम बिफोर Are the people who might perhaps have inspired Jack Dorida to create this phenomenal theory called deconstruction, and the people who have come after Jack Dorida perhaps have used Jack Dorida theory as a foundation to create their own theory. So, having said that, 1844, Frederick Nietzsche was born. He belongs to the Hellenistic philosopher, and uh, alignment to that was the existential philosopher who was been. Uh, Uh, forefronted by Soren Kierkegaard, who was a Danish philosopher, then Jean Paul Sartre, who was a French philosopher, then came your uh, Albert Camus, who was absurdism, and also one name needs to be told is the Franz Kafka. And Franz Kafka trial is a well reflection of this particular uh, absurdism and nihilism, the existential philosophy. And we can also found this uh, theory has been reflected in Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot. Okay, now nineteen. 1856, Sigmund Freud was born. 1857, Ferdinand Schiller was born. And my name, they belong to structuralist thinker. I am going to tell you who are the structuralist thinker all, all about. So, 1856 was Ferdinand uh, Sigmund Freud was born. 1857, a year later, Ferdinand Schiller was born. 1900, Jacques Lacan was born. 1908, Claudel Hirschfeld was born. 1926. Michael Foucault was born. 1930, Jack Dorida was born. 1936, uh, your Stanley Lindfish was born. 1980, my uh, Ronald Burt was born. So they are these are the people who were there before and after the birth of Jack Dorida. So the French philosopher. Now, what is deconstruction? what exactly is deconstruction deconstruction simply means to deconstruct something and you can only deconstruct when there is a construction when we see when we say in terms of in the arena in the pursue in the very relief of english literature we have to understand what english literature is all about english literature is nothing but a reflection of our life which is been jot down With a uh, with a certain aesthetic aestheticism and certain a uh, kind of a uh, literary devices, which by reading you are going to get immense pleasure. There is a certain amount of pleasure that you are going to derive by reading literature. And critical thinkers, critical theories are all about trying to dissect, operate the literature and try to see where the meaning lies, how far they are relevant, and how which. in which other way they are there are errors in the okay so critical thinkers basically are revolve around this particular phenomenon of trying to dissect the meaning where it is found till here clear okay so you can see in 19 before 1920 the work of art is considered as a work it simply means that the meaning is been secured meaning is been equivalent meaning is tried to we we'll try to grasp the meaning depending upon what the author wants to say and once what the author wants to say is the final meaning it's a close end after 90 to what happened was that it is no more a work but it is regarded as a text it simply means there is an open end what the author wants to mean is not important but what the readers must understand how you interpret it depending upon which culture you belong what have you understand from the text is what the meaning is all about that is how you have understand that the meaning is this But later, in new historicism and in new criticism, what they have done, they try to focus only upon text. What they have applied close reading to the text and try to see the meaning exists not in the author, not in the readers, but the text itself. Text itself is self-sufficient. Okay, so once the meaning has been confirmed that this is what the meaning is, and the meaning is found nowhere else, rather than the text, then you are going to deconstruct the text. and try to see that the meaning which actually is been found obviously in the text is not the meaning but meaning is somewhere else and where is the meaning that is what a deconstruction is all about okay that is what a deconstruction is all about now 
one thing is clear that the meaning is found in the text, inside the text, within the letters, behind the letters, above, below. That is where the meaning somewhere has been resides upon. Now to understand deconstruction, you see when you deconstruct something, you are deconstructing a construction and construction is nothing but a meaningful object. When there is a meaning, there is an organization, there is an organized, there is an intact, there is a shape, there is an intact. It is a meaningful and you try to dismantle it. You, you try to break it down, you try to, dis, you try to dismantle it, open it up. Okay, that is what deconstruction is all about. And to understand deconstruction, perhaps I have been forced to understand what is structuralism. Because deconstruction is nothing but deconstructing the meaning. And meaning is somewhere found in the arenas, in a discipline where the structuralism thinker told that in an organization, in an organized cohort and in a, in a, very, uh, in a very intact structure, which actually helps you to build the meaning. Okay, so when you want to deconstruct it, you cannot escape to understand the very comprehensive understanding of what the deconstruction, what the structuralism is all about. Okay, so let us see what is, what do you mean, what do we mean by structuralism? Ferdinand de who has, whose work, who actually is the forefather, who actually is the father of structuralism, he has told that it is the structure which is responsible for generating the meaning, not the writer, not the author, but the structure itself is responsible for generating the meaning inside the text. There has to be a structure. Now, uh, what do you mean by structuralism? Structuralism means a structure and structure is not, this is the structure. This is nothing but a structure. This is a structure. Okay, and in that structure, meaning lies. Meaning, structure is what? It is a kind of a discipline, it is a kind of an order, it is a kind of all the do's and don'ts which help you to keep the structure the way it is. And to understand language, there are certain structure within the language. And when we are trying to see the meaning in the language, then you will realize that because of a structure, because of a structure, the meanings are intact, meanings are built within the within the language because of the structure and that structure comprises of culture, our socio-economic condition, the way we are upbringing, all those things, all those things somewhere are responsible, are in owners, are whole equal responsibility, are an active participation, active participate in building the meaning of that language and language, what is the meaning of a language? What do you understand by language? Language is nothing but a collection of signs, S I Z and sign. And language is a medium that we use to convey our message to other person, to other people. If I don't use a language, what I am going to do is that I am going to use my hand gesture. So this is hand gesture. But when I am using sound, Language is nothing but a collection of sound, it is nothing but a mixture, amalgamation, culmination of different sounds, quantities, different sounds. So when I am plucking, plucking out sounds from available multiple sounds that I have in the language, I am selecting sound to convey a message to you depending upon what is the meaning of that sound in, within, the, within the structure. So I am trying to convey a message to you by using the medium called language. So language is nothing but a medium. And Ferdinand Sashar has told that language is nothing but a sign. And sign is divided into signifier and signifier. So a signifier is the sound that I am using to mean something. The speaker uses a signifier. That means this is a sign to signify something. It signifies image. It signifies concept. When the person who has received this sound, when I'm the person whom I'm speaking to, I'm using this particular sign and the signifier. The sound that I'm using becomes a signifier because this is what I'm using to throw it to you because this there holds the meaning. And when the person whom I'm speaking to understand 
this uh, sound it becomes a concept it becomes signified the person who say the sound is a signifier and the person who receive the sound the person who received the sound through his ear in his brain the image has been formed that is a concept that is called signified so one sound leads to a meaning so signifier is equal to signify so each sound carries one meaning and the definition of structuralism enters here the structure that you belong is going to determine which sound means what thing which signifier means a concept is basically dependent upon which structure do you belong so in hinduism or in christianity if i would have been a bengali family if i would have born in a christian african chinese the sound that are they are going to speak are completely different from the sound that i am speaking so what they the sound that i am speaking since within this structure the culture the hereditary the history the social economic condition and our upbringing indoctrination plays a equal role in determining which sound means which thing similarly this thing so similarly the person depending upon this structure is going to understand that this sound means that thing but if a person if a person belonging to different structure this sound would not mean this thing this sound would have mean something else so that is what the structure is all about it is the structure that is going to decide the meaning of a word the sound and these sounds are arbitrary arbitrary you want to mean it is not god given it is random any word can mean anything depending who structure that you belong because and this is this is nothing but the basis basic premises of structuralism post structuralism try to say that a sound that a sound which means a meaning that meaning is nothing but under sound the word which means a concept but in post structuralism the word don't mean the concept but the word that means under concept are you getting it in a post structuralism post means after in a post structuralism the word doesn't mean a concept but a word means another word and when you want to mean what that word is that word becomes another word how it is possible because the sound that i'm speaking is means a concept signified signifier means a signified in structuralism but when i apply when i see in the post structuralism the thinkers told that the signifier doesn't mean the signified but another word and when you try to mean what this signified means that it becomes another word because the signified no longer becomes a signifier no longer becomes a signified but it is going to trans transform to another signifier so when you try to mean what that signifier signifier means what that signified means then it is going to become another signifier so the signifier the list of signifier goes on it is a continuous process there is no finality of meaning once you reach the meaning it is not the meaning but it is a illusion of meaning that you have rest upon you can never reach to the real meaning because the, you can never get to the finality of meaning and that is what the post structuralism celebrates it glorifies the very idea that you can never receive to the finality of meaning okay that is the post structuralist thinker all that is what the post structuralist is in all about and the writers like jacks lacan uh, your uh, your your ronald burke or your jack dorida they belong to post structuralist thinker okay so deconstruction if i have to told deconstruction basically operates on that level deconstruction fundamentally operates on that premises that foundation where he completely disregard the meaning which is obvious the meaning which is obvious he completely reject the thing and the meaning which actually we never give privilege to that is the meaning that he try to see so let me tell you uh, deconstruction deconstruction is nothing but a reaction to the western way of thought and a western way of philosophy or the western way of thinking basically acts upon privileging one thing over the other and that is called binary so all the texts that we understand they privilege one thing over the other and why they privilege one thing over the other because that is how they have designed this entire culture of meaning making process the meaning making process somewhere is the original genesis or somewhere is been designed by the western philosopher by privileging one thing over the other that is the binaries okay 
and it is what the Martin Heidegger in his book Been and Time, he also has reflected the same concern that what West has done is that they have privileged one thing over the other. Like, uh, he is a boy. Okay, he is a boy. So, is, this particular word is, this particular sound is in the language determines presence. Presence of something. They are privileging presence over absence. They are privileging good over evil. They are privileging west over east. They are privileging refinement over a barbarian. They are privileging educated over superstitious. Okay. So the entire process of meaning making is somewhere being generated, operated in this mechanism where the presence of something is given more privilege than the absence. That is why Jack Dorida in his On Grammatology, which was published in something 1967, he told that West considers speech to be the ultimate representative of language. Why? Because the very yardstick that they use is the presence of something, why not the absence, and who, that is called phonocentricism. In the phonocentricism, what a West has done is that they privilege speech. Phonocentricism, centricism, speech is in center. So he, they privilege speech over writing because speech, when a person is speaking to someone, he is present. And a person whom he is speaking to, he is also present. But when it comes to writing, the person who has write something, and the person, the time that he reads, the writer was absent. You see, let me give you a very beautiful instances you can read it upon. Then when an examiner, in an examination, when a student writes an examination in a paper, but the time that the examiner is, is checks it, receives and checks it in the home, the students who are the examiner are not present. So there is an absence. So that is the reason why speech is given more importance, more priority than the writing. And that is the reason why speech is considered to be a representative is an authentic, genuine, bona fide representative of uh, language. But Jack Dreyder told in his deconstruction that we also need to ponder upon, we also need to dissect a language and try to see the underprivileged area, the, the things that are not been given privilege to. Like, like in, 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 uh, like uh, in on grammatology, on the, and that particular book that was published in 1967, he has told that it is not only speech but also the writing who also needs to be seen, which also needs to be seen as important factor to determining the representative of a language because writing uh, also share equal responsibility, also share equal part in organizing the thought before writing. So in that context, in that way, writing also holds equal platform, equal validity to represent the language. Okay. And uh, Western way of thought that Jack Dorida criticized based upon this presence. And deconstruction is all about looking at the unprivileged aspect of any language, unprivileged aspect of any idea. We do directly get the meaning. How we get the meaning? You, give, you get any text and you get the meaning because you always look for the obvious meaning and those obvious meaning are somewhere been operated in your subconscious mind because that is how we have been brought and brought up in. We are unheard. We are habituated in understanding the meaning in a western way of thought. And a western way of thought which privileges the presence over the absence, we unknowingly privilege, we privilege to death, death. We unknowingly succumbed, we unknowingly adhered to that privilege idea of any language but deconstruction Jack Dreyder has told it is you can you need also have to look at the unprivileged aspect of any idea that also hold equal part in determining the meaning okay till here clear so as general statement is that you look young so in this statement when we adhere to the western way of thinking but privileging young over the old you are telling that you look young it simply means that you are beautiful you are young 
you are uh, you some you we have somehow put the subject put the person whom we are referring to to be in the uh, to be in the sole owner of a privileged position to be a positive aspect of her life by telling that she is young or he is young you look young but what now when we apply deconstruction in this sentence in this statement what we are going to look at is the un unprivileged aspect that is old so what is not told in the text is also been told according to deconstruction and it gives another story in every sentence, in every in every text, there is an underlying. Uh, we have to peel that layer and try to see what are the un, unprivileged aspects of the idea which actually holds equal part in determining the meaning. So when I tell you look young, it obvious means that you look young. But what I have not told, and if I, when we apply deconstruction in this particular uh, in this particular sentence, you are going to understand that it is not the young. It is the old that also needs to be looked upon. When I tell you look young, it simply means that you are actually old. You are actually old. You look young simply means what? You are old otherwise. That is the reason why you look young, but actually you are old. So deconstruction tries to see the unprivileged aspect of any language. So the phalagocentrism. What is the meaning of phalagocentrism? Man is privileged over woman. Why? Because there is a presence. Because there is a presence. And West has privileged presence more than absence. And deconstruction try to see the absence of any meaning. Deconstruction try to see which are the things that is not present in the text. So when I have told phalagocentrism, that means man is superior than a woman simply because of the presence of a male organ which is absent in a female that is the reason why men are superior than a woman the yardstick which they have used is the presence phalago is the sexual organ phalagocentrism okay so western way of thought is nothing is equivalent to the social structure our thought our uh, mind the way our mind operates our belief all these things are nothing but a repartition, reflection, or production of our culture, our social system, social setup, and language is what we are. Language is what the medium. It eventually end up turning out to be a medium to convey our message. But the larger thing that we have to understand is that deconstruction. Jack Derrida, who was born in 1930, has simply attacked upon the social structure of the West. By using the language, they have told that you have indirectly privileged one thing over the other. Okay. So that is what the deconstruction is all about. If you like this lecture, give a thumbs up. Thank you. Like and share. Subscribe. Thank you very much. Thank you.